fringe. Um, and this. Is, let's call him Ben, because that was his name. This is Ben. Um, I met Ben when I was still in school. Kind of. 
control of the whole situation and manipulate things so much because my mum was dealing with that um, and yeah but that's a, maybe a story for another time but um, so yeah me and Ben started dating um, things were fine I think for the first couple of months really um, and I think it was after the first few months that Ben started to change now Please, please. 
This made teenage Emily very sad, but teenage Emily thought that she was in love. And if you love someone, well, this is this is what you do, isn't it? No, no, it's not. But at the same time, I have, and I I pride myself on this. Um, I have always been a strong woman. Um, and so what I did was I didn't put these things in the bin. What I did was I put them in a carrier bag and I took them to school and I gave them to my friend and I said, look after these things. I can't have them in my house. Uh, the posters, I think I'd hid in a drawer. Um, the pictures, because he wanted me to like delete all the pictures on my computer, including the ones when I'd seen them at Milton Keynes. Um, I copied them all to a CD and I had that CD just in a drawer. So I had everything, but as far as Ben was concerned, it was all in the bin.
series, but that was like TV series that have covered abusive relationships and control. There's only one that I've seen that I think covered exactly how I felt. And there was a scene in this series where the guy was basically telling the girl how she was awful and useless and he was going to leave. And she was saying all these things like, oh no, don't leave me. Um, I need you and all of this and trying to win him back over and it kind of like juxtaposed it, if that's even the right word, with like her inner like mental self just like screaming at her like, no, why are you doing this? And that is like, that is what is happening in your head when you are going through this. You are like, you like, you can hear yourself speaking and saying to this person, please, 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 just stay with me, just stay with me. But part of you in your head is like, no, why are you doing this? You don't need this person. This person is ruining your life. So, yeah, back on topic or back on track. Um, he, oh, legs are going up again, being sat in this corner. We were happy for a little bit because I'd got rid of all my great day stuff. me and my dad were, 
he decided that he would drive a wedge between me and my dad. And at this point, it was fairly easy for him because
sorry if you know me, sorry if you relate to me and you're watching this, um, and you're like, no, I don't want to hear this, um, yeah, like, he convinced me that I was just terrible, and that I couldn't please any man, um, like, not to blow my own trumpet, but I know that's not true, um, but sometimes I do get in my head about it, and, like, now I will just say, like,
think he'd come around my house at one point um, to try and win me back. And I basically, and he was like, well, you give up all your Green Day stuff. And I was like, well, did I? And like pulled open this drawer and like all of the Green Day stuff that I got back, like all of the CDs, I was like, they were there the whole time, you f idiot. You never controlled me 100%. I always kept these things and you never realised. And I always think that the fact that I kept a hold of those things um, was part of the reason that I managed to get out. And also because Sarah and Vaughn were such amazing friends and stuck by me even when I was probably being like super flaky and super weird. Um, they stayed with me and they were my friends no matter what and that is true friendship. And if you have stuck this video out, thank you very much for letting me ramble at you for nearly an hour. Uh, like I said, there's probably so much stuff that I've forgotten um, that even happened. Like, when I say some of the stuff, like, think about now, I'm like, I know there's people that go through so much worse, so much more. Um, but hopefully hearing my story um, will have maybe helped some of the survivors, maybe help them come to terms, help them speak about their story, because it is important that if we can, that we do speak about these things um, in regards to where is he now, if you even care. Um, like there was lots of other stuff that happened after we broke up but I feel like I need to cut this video short um, and not go into all, maybe I could go into all in a separate video if you're really interested um, about what happened after we broke up like in between us breaking up and me going to uni um, because there was a second kind of abusive relationship in that stock gap but I don't think that was his fault
things was this is going back uh, he didn't want me to have MSN messenger or an MSN email address that was another way he separated me from friends he made me like delete MSN um, but I backed up like all of my uh, contacts and stuff so I could get them back um, the only one that really bothered me we actually got back in touch immediately as soon as me and Ben got like broke up like I had re-added an eye and said and I was like look I know you've not heard from me for years but it's me this is what's happened and like we still speak to this day like I'm really good friends with that person um so I don't know whether he is still doing the same thing to his now wife I really hope not um and Jesus Christ it's late so I am going to go and leave this video for now and thank you for watching um if there is anything else that you would like me to like expand upon then they have discussed this video